By the end of this video, I'm hoping that you're gonna reframe your question from are carbs bad to how do different types of carbs affect the human body and work towards or work against our wellness goals. You'll also learn how eating certain types of carbs can actually help prevent colon cancer and diverticulitis. So stick around till the end to understand how and why that is true, what specific foods to include more of, and to get a really deep understanding of carbohydrates. All of that and more coming up right now. All right, so let's look at what carbohydrates are typically made up of. We could get into like the whole molecular structure, the lactose, the sucrose, the fructose, but for the sake of this video um, and the scope of it, I'm not gonna go over that. We're gonna really talk about the basic breakdown of carbs in terms of sugars and fiber and things like that. So that's just gonna be more relevant, I feel like, to you guys that are watching anyways. So when we look at total carbohydrates, a really easy way to think about it is there's two types of carbs. We have complex carbs and we have simple carbs. The complex carbs mainly tend to have lots of fiber in them and fiber um, is either gonna be soluble or insoluble. Whereas the simple carbs are going to have a lot of sugars in them more than anything. They're gonna be typically lacking in fiber and they may have either added sugars or natural sugars. If you want to actually have a video that gets into the differences here. When we eat a lot of these simple carbs or sugar, our blood sugar can spike and then our insulin gets released and then our blood sugar drops again. So it can cause that spike in energy and the crash in energy. Whereas when we're having complex carbs that have more fiber, we are not experience, experiencing such a huge spike and crash. In fact, we have a more of a steady release of energy. So we feel a little bit more energetic. We feel a little bit better inside and our blood sugar is not doing this. So what are fibers and what are these sugars? So Soluble fiber is going to be found in foods like oats, barley, nuts and seeds, really pistachios, cashews, any kinds of nuts and seeds, um, any kind of beans like pinto beans, black beans, red beans, whatever beans you like, <laughs> lentils, fruit, all types of fruits and vegetables. And I'll show you exactly how much fiber each of these things contain in one of the slides coming up. And insoluble fiber is mainly going to be found in like whole wheat bread and other whole wheat products. When we look at the simple carbs, these are really going to be, um, or sorry, when we look at the, the natural and added sugars, these are going to be things like cane sugar, high fructose corn syrup, um, molasses, coconut nectar, agave. And like I said, all of these things are really going to affect our blood sugar the same way. It doesn't matter that some of them are lower glycemic than others. That doesn't make it healthier. It's still going to affect our blood sugar. And we want to use all of these in moderation, but we'll talk more about that coming up. And as you can see here, so I, I listed some of the things that fiber does for us. It reduces our risk of diverticulitis. Um, it reduces our risk of having high cholesterol because it brings down the cholesterol level in our blood. Um, it helps with constipation. And I'm gonna show you exactly how it helps with diverticulitis and constipation, as well as colon cancer. Um, it helps prevent our risk for colon cancer and type two diabetes because it really has that stabilizing effect on our blood sugar. Here's a quick little experiment for you. One day for one meal, just have a plate of pasta, white pasta, maybe throw some marinara sauce on there, and then rate your hunger level on a scale of one to 10, one being starving, 10 being stuffed um, after you eat it, and then see how long it takes for you to get hungry again. Another day, another meal, try having a bowl of refried beans or something, okay? Cause that's gonna be high in protein, high in fiber. And do the same thing, rate your hunger level after you ate it. And also note how long does it take for you to get hungry again after eating that. See if there's any difference um, between the pasta and the beans and try to make them similar in portion sizes, similar in calories. So you can kind of be accurate with it, but just see if there's any difference there in how long it takes for you to get hungry again after eating. So a high fiber diet is really gonna soften the stool, give bulk to the stool, and it allows it to pass through the colon really quickly and easily. So as you can see, the stool is going through our colon really easily with all that fiber. Um, and this is one of the ways that fiber can help prevent colon cancer and diverticulitis is because it makes it our stool so easy to pass without um, straining so quickly and easily. That's what we want, right? So how much fiber do we really need to reap these benefits? All of these benefits that I talked about. Personally, I typically tell people to, to follow the adequate intake because 
not everyone is counting calories. I don't think it's necessary for everyone to count calories, but 25 to 38 grams of fiber per day. And most Americans and Canadians only get half of this because we tend not to eat a lot of those high fiber foods. One tip that I would really, really recommend, if you are starting to increase more or starting to include more of these fiber foods in your diet, be careful because if you're not used to eating a lot of fiber and your gut microbiome is not used to it, you can experience a lot of uh, GI side effects. So you can have like flatulence and bloating and gas and it's just not fun. So to minimize that, um, you really want to gradually increase your fiber intake. So about maybe five to 10 grams a day. Um, everyone is different though. So you may be able to tolerate more or less but you wanna do it slowly so that you're not feeling like these negative side effects. In addition, you should make sure you're drinking lots and lots of water while you're increasing your fiber to also minimize those effects. So fiber, fluid, and activity all kind of go along together. So these are the different foods that have different amounts of fiber. So really, like I said, you're gonna find them in whole grains, in fruits, beans and nuts, and vegetables. When you look at fruit, some of the highest fiber fruits are gonna be pears um, is with the skin because the skin contains a lot of the fiber. Uh, raspberries uh, and berries, calorie for calorie, berries have so much fiber in them. You can't go wrong with nuts, uh, nuts and beans. Black beans, as you can see, it's eight grams and half a cup. Uh, lentils, eight grams and half a cup. So it's really easy to get your fiber if you really focus on having some of these foods in every meal. And of course, vegetables. We tend not to eat a lot of vegetables. Literally anything counts. You can have onions, you can have carrots, you can have um, avocado. And you know, today, earlier, I made a, this is gonna sound really weird to some people, but a peanut butter and pickled onion sandwich. And this was inspired from Ethan Shlobowski. I hope I pronounced that correct, but he's here on YouTube. He's like, um, a cooking master, if you will. And he recommended that we all try peanut butter and pickled onion sandwich. And my God, it was so good. So <laughs> let me know in the comments below if you would ever try that. But it was, I really liked it because not only did it taste good, but it was a good way to get in some extra vegetables in a meal that you wouldn't normally get vegetables, right? We normally eat like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and there's no vegetables in that. But instead of jelly, adding some pickled onions, it was just a cool, unconventional way to get some vegetables in and um yeah it was great so let me know if you try that in the comments and don't forget to follow ethan because he has some really good uh, cooking ideas something that i feel personally really helps me eat more of like vegetables and these other foods is to try to use them in different and creative ways if you're used to just eating broccoli um like steamed broccoli try try broccoli in an air fryer or try oven roasted broccoli or try frying it on a pan variety is the spice of life and when you're able to eat different foods in different combinations and in different ways, it can just make you so much more excited to include more of those foods. So try to be adventurous and, and try unconventional things. Don't be afraid of trying something new because you never know, you may really, really like it. For those that have an air fryer at home, Brussels sprouts in the air fryer are so good with some salt, pepper, some garlic, throw in a bunch of seasonings on there, put it in the air fryer and oh my gosh, they are so good. I dip them in some vegan ranch and oh, amazing. Also tofu scramble with some refried beans in there adds a lot of fiber and a lot of different textures and flavors. And it just makes it so much more exciting than just eating tofu scramble by itself. And you could do the same thing with eggs. Eggs mixed up with some beans, maybe throw in some avocado in there, maybe some onions and bell peppers and spinach. Another thing you could do is take some oats or are oats on here? Oh, oats are not on here, but oats are also very high in fiber. And you could make a savory oatmeal dish. Okay, so you can definitely do like the traditional oatmeal with some berries and some peanut butter or something. That has a lot of fiber. Throw in some hemp seeds or chia seeds on top, you're adding more fiber there. But if you like unconventional food combinations, um, something that I've been loving lately is a savory oatmeal bowl. This is gonna sound weird, but don't knock it till you try it. So taking oatmeal, um, when I was a vegetarian, I actually threw an egg in there, and I think that's a great idea for some protein. If you're a vegan, you can throw in some just egg in there. Also really good. And adding as many vegetables as you want. So onions, bell peppers, tomatoes, mushrooms even. Definitely put in some salt and pepper and garlic and all the seasonings and flavors that you want some hot sauce on top and oh my gosh, so nutritious, so delicious, you can't go wrong. So let me know in the comments below if you try any of those unconventional food combinations. Let me know if you have any unconventional food combinations that include any of these high fiber foods because I would love to try some new things out too. So as far as added sugars, we really want to limit this as much as possible. And the, again, this goes for honey, agave, molasses, maple syrup, coconut, 
coconut sugar, all of those are considered added sugars. Things that are not considered added sugars are going to be um, naturally occurring sugars like those in fruits, like bananas, mangoes, things like that. So stevia and monk fruit are natural sweetener sweeteners. They're just non-nutritive sweeteners, but they don't have carbs in them. Artificial sweeteners like splenda and aspartame are also not considered added sugars because they don't have any calories. They don't have any sugar. And if you guys are interested, I have a couple of videos that you can check out on uh, sucralose and splenda and all of that. The Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommends that no more than 10% of our total calories should come from added sugar. So that's about 12 teaspoons if you're eating about 2,000 calories. The American Heart Association says no more than six teaspoons for women and no more than nine teaspoons for men. So really like added sugars when it comes to like cane sugar, honey, molasses, agave, all of these things don't have any health benefits really for us. Really the cons outweigh the pros. Sure, there might be some um, some calcium and molasses, but I don't think that we should be relying on added sugars to get our nutrition in. We want to limit these sugars as much as we possibly can. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you guys a couple of recommendations, like behavior change strategies to help you so that you don't feel completely deprived. You don't feel like you have to never eat these foods again, but you also feel like you're making some progress towards your health goals. So I kind of debated showing this picture because I felt like there was too much of an emphasis placed on calories. In my opinion, I feel like the more that we focus on calories, the less we focus on the nutrient density of foods. And I think that's so much more important. Like we could have peanut butter and that could be a lot of calories, but guess what? We're probably going to get really full and we're getting a lot of nutrition in there. Um, so anyways, that's my little rant about calories, but um, it, it just kind of goes to show you that added sugars can be found in a lot can be hidden. It can be hidden in a lot of these foods. For example, yogurt, um, a seemingly health food, can contain a lot of added sugars. At HEB, I believe, they sell this yogurt called Too Good, and there's only two grams of sugar in there. I believe it's sweetened with stevia. So that's a good way to cut down on added sugars in yogurt. For ketchup, personally, I like to use this Heinz No Sugar Added Ketchup because there's no sugar in there and there's no flavor sacrifice. Like, it still tastes like really good ketchup to me. Um, it contains sucralose, which is a artificial sweetener. And yeah, like don't be afraid of things just because they're artificial or quote unquote chemical. Um, I think there's such a stigma about natural is healthier and chemical or artificial is bad. Um, but literally everything we eat is a chemical. And anyways, I go into that in my uh, sucralose video, so you can definitely check that out. But yeah, a good option for those that eat a lot of ketchup and want to kind of cut down on how much added sugars they're having without really like even tasting it. Another one they don't have here is barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce can also tend to have a lot of added sugars in them. So check your barbecue sauce. There's also a no sugar added barbecue sauce I see being sold at HEB. Definitely look out for that if you feel like you eat a lot of barbecue sauce and that would be a good swap for you. And of course, things like sodas are full of added sugars. And like I said, they just don't have a lot of nutrition in them. So when we drink a soda, it's pretty much like all sugar. There's no vitamins. In fact, it can even hurt our calcium level and can cause cavities, you know? So the really the cons outweigh the pros. And I still wanna stay away from calling these foods bad foods because I don't want, I don't want people to think that you can never have these foods ever again. Sure, there's not much nutrition in them at all. Um, they're not gonna really do anything for our health. No one food is really gonna make or break our diet. There's no one food or one meal that's all of a sudden gonna cause us to be unhealthy or diabetic or whatever it is. If you're eating well 80% of the time, you can definitely make room for some of these foods. The more that you try to restrict or deprive yourself, sometimes, not always, but sometimes that can backfire and cause you to binge on those foods. Making some room in your diet to some sometimes have like a piece of chocolate or something is not going to kill you. And in fact, it might be better for your mental state. That doesn't mean that I'm saying that we should just like not worry about nutrition at all. And we should just have like whatever food we want and it doesn't matter. But I'm just saying that we shouldn't feel like we need to torture ourselves to be healthy. We just need to practice moderation. Most of the time, choose the higher fiber carbs and try to limit these foods as much as we can. And if there's some little swaps that we can make, like with the ketchup um, that we're, are not really gonna affect us, that we don't really mind, then when we do that consistently over time, that may make more of a difference than the one occasion that we eat a piece of chocolate cake. Because it's really about the consistency of your diet over time, rather than one food or meal that's gonna change everything or affect everything. One thing I will say though, if you're really working on improving your health, it can't. the easiest thing to do would be to swap about the liquid calories. If you're having like lots of regular soda or if you're having um, like Powerade or Gatorade or lemonade or iced tea, like sweetened iced tea. 
that might be a good place to start. See if you can swap out those things for the unsweetened or diet versions. Simply by doing that, you may really see a huge improvement in your energy levels and your health. Let's look at the pros and cons of having more carbs versus having like a very low carb diet. Because some people say, you know, eating carbs are gonna make you gain weight or they're gonna make you fat. <laughs> and no, that's not true. It's not the carbs that make us gain weight. It's an excess of calories. Whether it comes from carbs, proteins, or fats, any calories eaten in excess of what we're burning is gonna cause us to gain weight. In fact, even eating protein in excess of our needs can cause us to gain weight. The excess protein can be stored as adipose tissue, um, which is fat in our bodies. Let's look at um, if we were to eat about 50% carbs and we keep our proteins at 20%, we have our fats about 30%, which is what is recommended typically. Here are the pros of eating this way. Well, you're gonna have more energy because carbs give you energy. This is the main macronutrient that's really gonna provide that energy for your brain cells, for your red blood cells. So we may have better workouts because carbs really give us that burst of energy that helps us get through any intense workouts. It might likely be easier to eat more fiber in this situation because remember, going back to the, the graphic where I showed you, carbs are made up of sugars and fibers. We don't get fiber from protein foods. We don't get fiber from fat foods. We get fiber from carbohydrate foods. So if we are eating more carb foods, we'd probably be more likely to get our recommended amount of fiber per day. Carbohydrates also restore glycogen that we need after a workout um, for recovery from that workout and, and actually works with protein synergistically to help us build muscle. And carbohydrates also provide variety. Like I, was, like I was saying before, variety is the spice of life, right? And when we're eating more carbohydrate foods, we just have more options. So what are the cons to eating high carb? Well, it may also be easier to overeat calories because if you think about it, um, if you're having like a lot of carbs, maybe you're having like lots of pasta or lots of rice, and it can be really easy to make pasta or rice to starve your meal instead of vegetables or legumes or something, right? And so it can be really easy to overdo it on that. And when we overdo it on like the pasta or the rice or some, or bread or things like that, it may not really fill us up because carb foods um, typically, especially if they're lower in fiber, we're not gonna get as full. We're not gonna get as satiated. We get more full and satiated from eating proteins and fats. So that could be a downside, um, especially if you're not eating lots of fiber foods. Eating lots of carb foods may also increase your risk of diabetes, the um, energy spikes and crashes, the hunger spikes and crashes, but that's more concerning if you're not cautious about eating fiber. So if you're eating a lot of like white bread, white pasta, white rice, then yeah, sure. Having a high carb intake in this situation may increase our risk for all of these things. Now let's look at what if we limit our carbs to only 20% of our calories? So this is almost like keto territory and we, keep our proteins at 30% and we keep our fats at, at 40%. How would that affect us? Well, having an eating plan actually might help because some people are just motivated when they have you know, a certain diet or eating pattern to follow. Because you're reducing your carbs so much, you have to compensate with either proteins and or fats. And having a focus on proteins and fats in every meal can really help you stay full and keep you satiated meal to meal which can also be so much better for your blood sugar. So you might see an overall reduction in your total calorie intake naturally without really uh, trying to do anything else because you're just gonna be more full from these proteins and fats and there's the possibility of going into ketosis. What are the cons of eating this way? Well, like I said, you have to replace the carbs with either proteins or fats. And in doing so, some people may find that it's really easy to overdo their saturated fat intake. When I was vegetarian back in the day, I actually tried to do vegetarian keto and I definitely still had a lot of saturated fats. This is not ideal, especially if you have a family history of cardiovascular disease or high cholesterol, because you may be more prone to really being affected by those saturated fats and it causing uh, cardiovascular problems. So it's something to be careful about. Also, like I said, remember carbs have fiber. That's the only place you're gonna find fiber is in carbs. And it might be difficult to get enough of that fiber, which may increase your risk for diverticulitis and colon cancer if you're not eating enough fiber. Lack of energy you might experience uh, in the short term because if you're not fat adapted, if you're not in ketosis, at first definitely you might experience a lack of energy from not having carbs. 
Sustainability, I think, is one of the biggest things. Can you continue this way of eating five years from now and 10 years from now? So there might be a lack of variety here. So when we're not having a lot of carbs and mostly our foods are coming from proteins and fats, I worry about things like vitamin C, which is mainly found in fruits and a little bit in vegetables too. Zinc, which is found in nuts and seeds, so you may be able to get by on that, as well as magnesium. So I actually have a video on the keto diet and this comes from a perspective of like nutrients of concern. So I'll link that um, for you guys, but I go into detail on that lack of variety aspect, like these lack of uh, nutrients. Hopefully that gives you some, some things to think about uh, high carb versus low carb. So what is my opinion on all of this? I would argue that you can have the benefits of lower risk of colon cancer, lower risk of diverticulitis, lower risk of type two diabetes, better energy without having to be so extreme as to cutting carbs to 20%. So here are some tips for you. You really want to prioritize the high fiber carbs over other carbs because they're going to keep you full and they're going to have all of those health benefits. You want to limit added sugars as much as you possibly can. I would say aim to eat well 80% of the time. And some tips to help you get there is to think through it before you do it. So if you have trouble cutting out sodas or any sugary foods and you have those every single day, pause. How is this going to affect my body? How is this gonna make me feel an hour later? How is this gonna make me feel tomorrow? Is it gonna be worth it? Saying it out loud can really help too. Instead of saying, oh, I'm just gonna eat more fiber, or I'm gonna reduce my sugar. No, 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 you want something very specific. You wanna say to your friend, call up your friend and be like, look, I am planning to replace my regular sodas with water every single day for the next three days. Um, and so this is how I'm going to do it. And you actually have a plan to do it. Another thing you could do is just track your intake because awareness really helps bring change. The thing is that you want to include um, one to three servings of fruit every single day to get a variety of nutrients. Eat carbs before and after intense workouts because like I said, your muscle is really going to utilize those, those carbs. Um, and something I didn't really talk about, but that is important that I might talk about in future videos is to pair proteins and fats with carbs to have that sustained energy over time. So this kind of does the same thing that fiber does. It really gives you that steady release of energy. Whereas if you just eat carbs by themselves, it can just spike you and drop you. If you're still with me at this point, Thank you. Thank you for watching this far. Type in boss in the comments below so I know you made it this far. I know it can be really enticing and tempting to follow an extreme diet, especially one that limits carbs so much because it can feel so accomplish, accomplishing. It can feel very, is that a word? Accomplishing? No. Maybe you feel so accomplished by only eating 20 grams of carb a day, but really think about everything I said. Think about all the benefits that carb ha carbs have for our body and think about the mental aspect of food too because Food is so much more than just providing our body with fuel and energy. And I could go on and on about this, but let me know if this video helped you think differently, think out of the box about carbohydrates. Um, let me know if there's anything in here that you want me to expand on in another video, because I know I talked about a lot. And please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video because I have so much more to come. Follow me on Instagram as well, and I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.